I've heard about a lot of clinical trials, some clinical trials for pharma products, some clinical trials for medical device products. Uh, maybe you can speak a bit more about the difference between these two and how they're the same or how they are different and how that relates to a development program. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. And, and uh, you know, there, there, is a, there is a bit of a distinction between clinical trials that we'll do for uh, med device and clinical trials that we'll do for, for pharma. And you raise an interesting point. You know, we do a number of combination devices here. And so you really need to bridge both worlds uh, of, the, of, the, of the, the med device clinical trial, which typically involves, you know, safety and efficacy uh, and, and validating the claims of what the device is going to do. If we think about a medical device like a diagnostic test, you know, proving out it with clinical samples mm -hmm. that the device is going to meet the performance criteria, it's going to detect what it's supposed to detect and do it in the, in the, in the, in the proper environment. So that's, you know, a good example of a, of a medical device clinical yeah. trial. And then we think about, you know, you know I think if, if this people think about a prototype clinical trial, we're often thinking about big pharma, what a, mm -hmm. what a pharma trial looks like. And they're quite different, you know, the, the uh, and again, I'm not an expert in the area, but, but really uh, a pharma clinical trial, there's typically uh, four phases of mm -hmm. that clinical trial. Uh, the first one being phase one, <laughs> surprisingly. Yeah. And phase one is typically in a population of healthy volunteers. And it's just looking at the safety of the, whatever the, the, the pharma product that we're gonna test. It's very small and valued, kind of around 50 patients or so, depending on what the power calculation needs to be. The, the next one is gonna be a, a phase two. Yeah. And phase two is in the population where the drug's being deployed, right? If you have mm -hmm. a disease state and we're seeing if it's, if it's effective, and those need larger numbers, typically in the you know, less than a thousand, but uh, phase two trials, and again, it depends on the power calculation, mm -hmm. but that's what it's looking at, just the efficacy of the product. Yeah. Phase three will often use comparing to an existing product or a standard treatment, and, and therefore you need a, a much higher number of mm -hmm. subjects, and so it's a, it's a much larger trial. So phase three is kind of, if we think about product development of, of pharma products, is probably one of the more important, important ones that yep. there, there are, because you're comparing, you're setting out your target product profile, and you're showing its differentiation in the, in the marketplace. And then finally we get to phase four, and phase four is often in this post-market surveillance, what we would, what we would have in our, uh, in our vernacular med device, mm -hmm. where it's using, uh, it's going for longer periods of time, longer or larger populations of people and looking for long-term effects of the drug or side effects in that case and reporting back to the regulatory body. So those are the four phases. It, it kind of parallels that a bit with, um, with med device. But the interesting thing for us though is in you know, these combination devices, understanding the, the role the med device plays in that, in that delivery process mm -hmm. and in what role it, it plays in those, in those trials. Yeah, yeah, so, so once the device is, uh uh, gone through a first clinical trial, then it will have to tag on to the whole pharma trial uh, journey. Really, all, that's all, the, all yeah. the way through. All the yeah. way through. It's yeah. fascinating. Interesting. Fascinating. Thanks so much, yeah. Nick, for that. My pleasure. That was the end of BioBreak. Have a great day. Have a great day.